All right, welcome to Off the Fence. Danielle Jervy Harmon is here. Hey, 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 Finch. I'm excited to be here. I've been waiting on you to come. <laughs> like waiting. I'm excited to be like, here. Like really waiting. Well, we're glad you're here tonight. So you have this thing called the incredible factor. And people are always asking, okay, what is that? Because I want to know, what is the incredible factor? And how does somebody get it? Like, is it like COVID? Did you catch it out in the air? <laughs> you're crazy. No, you do not catch it. You're born with it. So when I first started my business and I was trying to stand out amongst all the other people who technically do what I do, I was looking for a way to rise above the noise. And that's kind of how the incredible factor got started. So there's three components to it. The first is what I call your hug or your hot, undeniable gift. Okay. It's that thing that you do that when you do it, other people, they praise you for it. You tend to downplay and dismiss it. But your gift not only makes room for you, but it'll make you wealthy if you understand that your gift can solve a real problem for someone else. So the first component is your hug. The sex com second component is your SBM or your signature business move. It's the process that you utilize or the framework, if you will, that you've created to serve your clients that makes their success predictable every single time. When you do one, two, and three, it produces results A, B, and C. That's your signature business move. And then the th third component is your unique value proposition, which is basically a fancy business 101 way of saying what makes you different and compelling in the marketplace because consumers are programmed to notice your differences. And so what I actually do is I take clients or even it's actually a free gift that we give away is we give people our incredible factor worksheet in a quick training to help them to be able to succinctly identify and say there so that they can begin to see themselves rise above the noise. It doesn't matter where you are in business, Finch. If you don't know your incredible factor, you're leaving money on the table. Ooh, if you don't know your incredible factor. So let's say, for instance, somebody who's never heard of you, the incredible enterprises, and they don't have a clue what the incredible factor is. What would you say to somebody like that? Yeah, so I would say success leaves clues. And there's something that people have been complimenting you on for years. Since you were yay high to a grasshopper, they've been complimenting you on this thing. That's typically the first clue about your hug. The, the, to get to your signature business move, you want to think about how you're consistently showing up for your girlfriends, for your boys, for your church members. Because a lot of times the things that we do that we could be making money in, we're not making money in it because it's our gift. It's innate. And how dare I charge for the thing that God gave me, which is a big lie because God gave it to you so it could create wealth. But that mm -hmm. might be another conversation. And so I always say, you know, start by tracing the clues. What are the things that people inside of a week? What's the thing that several times people compliment you on? Nine times out of 10, that is the first string to pull in order to identify your whole incredible fact. Oh, man. Now, can can somebody have more than one incredible factor or is it just one? You can have more than one gift. There are lots of people who are multi-gifted and multifaceted, so that is entirely possible. When you have more than one, however, you want to be looking at the one that solves what I call a spice problem, the one that is specific, pervasive, immediate, clear, and expensive. Like the problem that your client has, what's the gift that solves that? That's the one you want to do. So using myself as an example, my biggest gift out of all the gifts that I have is words. I am a beast when it comes to messaging. And so whenever I'm working with my clients, one of the first things that I do is get into their business and shift the way that they look at the words that they're using to get people to take the actions they want them to take, messaging and marketing. And so that's the gift that I promote the most but I'm also brilliant in strategy. I'm extremely creative. I'm a big thinker. So I have lots of gifts and I line those gifts up in a way that's going to create success results in cold, hard cash for my clients. Okay. And I, I would, I would assume it also creates cold, hard cash for you, right? Uh, that would be correct. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't make it intense if it doesn't get you into cold, hard cash, right? Well, you know, Zig Ziglar said, if you help enough people get what they want, then you'll get what you want. Okay, that makes sense. And Zig Ziglar is a master. 
Yes, he is. Yeah. Yes, he was. Well, yeah. he was. I've been saying because if he <laughs> is, it's a problem. <laughs> So, so, so for people, you know, uh, I, I, I spoke about this for several weeks here on this show. Uh, the pandemic itself has changed the way we see life. It has changed every facet of life. Yeah. And there are some people who are, you know, here on Off the Fence, we dissect, challenge, and question the minds of today's renowned trailblazers and serial entrepreneurs. And our goal here is to always help people scale, climb, or clear the fence that they're sitting on. Because you know, just as well as I know in, in business, people are always on the fence about something, yeah. you know? So, so during this pandemic, people are looking at what worked, no longer works. Yeah. And you know, what a lot, a lot of people I've spoken with in this time are stuck. They're stuck mm -hmm. mentally, they're stuck financially. Uh, they're just stuck and they don't have a clue as to where to go from here. What would you say to someone? Because oftentimes people look at successful people and they don't think people have any problems. I think <laughs> problems hit everybody. It doesn't really matter. You know, this is true. So so what would you say to someone who's stuck on the fence right now or just stuck here? They're, they're in that great what I call that great area. That's that's the fence area. And yeah. it, they don't know what to do to move to either discover their incredible fact. Because, you know, when when people are, are bombarded with bills and creditors and all types of financial issues, it's hard for them to think creatively or to even think about their incredible factor. So what would yeah. you say to somebody who's stuck right now? Yeah, the first thing that just popped in is, you know, it is hard to access creativity. It's hard to even access God when you're sitting in a space of struggle. Yes. So the first thing you have to do is you have to do a little something that my nanny used to say. You got to get somewhere and sit down. So you got to <laughs> turn off the news, right? The, it ain't changed. Yes, there are more cases. Yep, a couple more people died. Like, I'm not trying to be insensitive to what's going on right now, but that is not going to help and change your situation. And what you focus on expands. And so if you keep focusing on the pandemic, the pandemic is going to get bigger for you. Right. But what you could do is you could focus on the problems that the pandemic has created that you have a real solution to so that you can start to get some of this money that is out here. You know, my clients are having their best years yet. Mm -hmm. During the pandemic, I have a client who literally just closed a one hundred and seventy eight thousand dollar client. Wow. During the pandemic, I have a client who literally just had three consecutive moms. So September, October and November and November at one hundred thousand dollars plus in cash in the month. So and these are just I mean, I've got clients who have done three or four million dollars. We ourselves in the last six months have done over a million dollars. There is only a pandemic going on if you let it consume you. Okay. So turn off the news, get a pen and paper and get crystal clear about what it is that you can do that solves a real problem. You might have to get some help depending upon how stuck you are. So mm. don't uh, ignore the benefit and the beauty of coaching. It, you know, that's a great way for someone to help you to find the answers that are inside of you and bring them out. Um, but you're going to have to get somewhere and sit down and turn off the damn TV. Stop <laughs> watching the feed on social media. OK, yes, maybe, you know, Trump doesn't want to leave the White House, but he's going to leave on January the 20th. <laughs> They're going to make sure he goes. You don't need to watch the, bl the blow by blow. Instead, what you need to be doing is like Eric B and Rock M thinking of a master plan. Thinking of a mess. Nothing plan. going on but sweat inside your hand if you keep watching that TV. <laughs> and so we got to change our environment. We got to, you know, shift our energy, get up and move our body, get some fresh air, mm -hmm. or find someone who can help you to find the creativity, right? If you can find someone who's in alignment, they can help you get realigned so that you're able to actually hear insight and wisdom that is coming from God and, you know, the source of our universe and all mm -hmm. of that. Um, but it is going to require you to do something different. I, I can't remember who said it first, but if you want something you've never had, you will need to do something you've never done. There's no way around that. And so we have to make sure that we're creating an environment where we are getting into action. As mm -hmm. I always like to say, God will give you more while you're moving than he ever will if you stand still. So we've got to get moving and you move in the direction that you know to go in. If your course needs to be shifted, guess what? It'll happen, mm. right? If you're on a road and the road has a wind in the bend, you're going with the ebbs and the flow of the road, but you got to get on the road first in order to be able to make that happen. 
All right, and you said some great things. Uh, the key here is, guys, if you're just joining us, we're talking to Danielle. She's uh, president, CEO, founder of Incredible One Enterprises. That's correct, mm -hmm. right? And we're talking about entrepreneurship. And many of you guys message me talking about, hey, I'm, I'm just getting started. Hey, I've, I've been in business for X amount of years, and I feel like I don't know how to grow from where I am to get where I desire to be. Uh, some of you are like, hey, I'm just stuck. I don't know which way and which direction to go. And I think you said some things here uh, that are key. And if you just join us, you're just, you're just gonna have to go back and <laughs> watch and listen uh, if you missed it. Uh, but finding a problem that you can solve, mm -hmm. that's the key, correct? That is the key, right? There is no business being done if there is no problem to solve. So that's the first thing. What is something that exists right now that I can be the solution to? And it, you know, if you think about a lot of the things that we use day in and day out, they came from solving a problem. Like, let's take stickies. I don't happen to have any right here, <laughs> but sticky notes came to be because. The creator of them needed some little pieces of paper to stick things on in order to remember specific things. Problem, solution to the problem, it's now a billion dollar thing, right? right. And, and similarly, we all have the capacity to solve problems. As an entrepreneur, that's what you do. You solve problems for profit. And so the kinds of problems that you wanna be solving are again, what I call spice problems. Those problems that are very specific, so we get beneath the surface, they're pervasive. It's almost like a rash. If this problem doesn't get solved, then it's going to spread. It's going to get worse. They are immediate and insurmountable problems, meaning they can't solve the problem without somebody's help. The person who has the problem is clear that the problem exists. Ever Have you ever, Finch, tried to help somebody who kept asserting that they didn't have a problem? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like hitting your head against a brick wall. So we don't want to do that. At all. The problem is it's expensive. It's costing them money. The longer the problem goes unsolved, the more money they are losing or not earning in the process. So when you can think about a problem that is that way, like mm -hmm. right now, let's take it as an example. There are new apps that are popping up. Zoom is doing extremely well. But guess what? There are new online meeting apps. Uh -huh. I just heard of something called AirMeet. I actually went to a virtual networking event that was held on air me it was really cool we got all we got around a virtual table and we could do speed networking together you know why because we're not going back to regular networking anytime soon right. so what is the problem that you see every single day that you could provide a solution to and if you you get bonus points if the problem that you can so provide a solution to does not require the development of software right that's the ah. beautiful thing about consulting if you if you have whether you have an advanced degree or not if you have an expertise or experience that somebody else is, has a problem in you could throw up your shingle right now and start to make money in your business another thing that's really popular right now is online learning right i mean yeah we have yeah. the tubes of the world where people are posting the videos on how to do anything. But guess what? You could create a full blown course on how to do almost anything that solves a problem. And there are people who will invest it because they've got time on their hands. Lots of people lost their job and they either need to start their own business or find another skill so that they can get another job. So that's a problem that you could offer a solution to. So what you need to do is find some time to sit and brainstorm about mm. things, problems that exist that you right now and today without having to do anything else could be the solution to. And you can find your way to money by doing so. Now, what, where would you tell someone to start when it comes to brainstorming to find that that niche that they might have that they can service people? Where would they start? They sitting down, they got pen and paper, they got the technology, they got the, pa the pad out, the phones. Where would they start in that process? Yeah, I would take them all the way back to their incredible factor. Start with writing down the things you're really good at, the things that people praise you for. Write those things down and then see which of those things could lead you down a path that you could explore further. So maybe you're great at drawing. And every time you draw something, people say, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. OK, you might be able to be a graphic designer. I don't know. Let's say you're great at helping people um, resolve conflict. Oh you could potentially be a coach or you could do training and development on communication and conflict resolution, right? Oh, okay. So just look at the natural 
things that people are complimenting you on day in and day out. And so write that down and then draw a line and say uh, to the problem that it solves. So what is the problem that is solved by that thing that people compliment you on? And likely you're going to find something that would actually be a strong enough problem that someone is willing to pay to access a solution to. Because at the end of the day, our clients hire us because they can't solve the problem on their own. That's right. If I could figure out how to fix my drain, I wouldn't have to call the plumber. Right. But because I don't know how to do that, uh, I'm paying whatever the fee is to get you here to unclog my zinc. So those are the types of things that we need to think about. Now, now, what about people who might think they're good at stuff, but they're not good? Because there's some people right now that think they're good at cooking. and It sucks. <laughs> Tastes like peanut and vaccine. Listen. <laughs> okay. Those people, <laughs> they need to find another gift. So when you think you're good at something, but you don't know, you want to validate it. So the next step after writing down all of the things you're good at and then identifying the problem is go look for validation and not validation in someone telling you what you want to hear, but right. proof that this particular thing that you're good at actually has solved the problem for someone else. Because it's we're no stranger to knowing that the thing that we do actually helps other people because that's what we keep getting hit over the head with over and over and over again. So the success again is going to leave clues for you. You shouldn't have to look very far to find the things that you're good at and people compliment you on and then identify if there's a problem to be served by them, solved by them. Okay. Now now you've been in business how long? 13 years. 13 years. What is what what, what has been and I'm not saying something ongoing, but in your 13 years of, of entrepreneurship, what is one struggle that you may have encountered? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the, the, the challenges always is being found by your most ideal clients. Mm. Like, unless you are willing, and, and there's always a trade off, right? Because you can spend the money, you can go out there and, and increase your advertising budget so that you get in front of more people to increase the number of people who like you. Yeah, that's totally a viable option, right? And we do definitely spend money on advertising, but it's great when you have the organic, right? Where, where mm -hmm. things are happening when people know you. In this age of social media, I built my business beyond the seven figure mark without a strong social media presence. Like still to this day, if you go and look me up, I don't look impressive from the <laughs> number of people who are following me. There's right. like a handful of people in the grand scheme of things, but don't be fooled by the number of followers that I have because the number of followers are the people who have tens of thousands or millions following them. That doesn't all necessarily equate to money either. Right. But, um, but I could always use more people who have the problems that I saw, right? So I think that's one of the biggest challenges, but to to be a little bit more transparent, I would say early in my business, so around 2000 and, so I started the business in 2007. I like fumbled incessantly in 2008. I had so bad so that I had to go back and get a job because I just didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I probably left my corporate job a little premature mm -hmm. without really having a, a straight up plan of how I was going to, turn this business idea into something that would at least meet my needs. And so I found myself having to go back to work. I ended up having to file bankruptcy during that time. But the, the thing that came out of that, that was really important for me, Finch, was that I was never going to go back to work for anyone else ever again. I declared that to myself. And so I became a student. I hired the coaches. I figured out what I needed to learn in order to be able to present myself. And that thing for me was through speaking. So I got myself booked to speak. And I would, you know, go and do my thing and people would be inspired and motivated and they would want to continue the relationship with me. And so then I started selling coaching and all of those other things. And it just kind of went on from there. But there the challenge that consistently occurred during that particular point in time was not taking the time to do the research to get clear about who my ideal client was. And so now that I'm crystal clear on who my ideal clients are, I'm able to speak their language so that they connect with me so much so that our business is generating seven figures a year and we're helping other people to be able to do the same thing. But it wasn't always that way, right? I, I yeah. might look like I've got it going on, but there was a point in time where I didn't have nothing. <laughs> and uh, if you remember those times and you use that as a source of inspiration to keep you moving. So when we came into the pandemic earlier this year, Everybody was panicking. I wasn't because I know that I offer a transferable result to a real problem that keeps people awake at night that they can't solve on their own. 
Mm. And so when you know that, you have a sense of confidence and assurance that changes the game for you. And your confidence will close more sales than your skills ever will. And so that's why it's important if we go all the way back to the person who's stuck, that we take the time to get somewhere and sit down, that we make sure we get the clarity, that we find a source of alignment and we leverage that in order to make sure that we have a firm understanding of who we are. The world will try to tell you who you are, but when you know who you are, they can't tell you to the point where you um, abandon what it is that you know to be true about yourself, your gifts and your talents and what you bring to the table. You'll always be in an environment where those things continue to serve you and you can always pick yourself up. And I think that's 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 a you have said a lot of wealthy things tonight. And I think I think for the most part, it has helped a number of people get off the fence because I mean, I'm sitting here thinking about a lot of the things you said uh, for myself. You know, in our business, when you have been successful and then you taper off, sometimes it's tougher to come back. Because yeah. because of the mindset that you might have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people think success is you've made it to a certain point and that, that's it. You can be at the top and then go to the bottom very quickly. Oh, you know, yeah. Life shifts and change uh, on a dime at times. And so or or just personal things in life may have happened to people that caused it caused a shift, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I think understanding your incredible factor, if you guys missed uh, this this conversation with Danielle, uh, make sure you listen to the replay. Uh, yesterday, yeah, I just want to say this. Yesterday, guys, we just got, uh, we have been going through this whole little thing with this show on the podcast streams. And yesterday, we got you know, contacted by Pandora. So now we're on all yeah. the platforms. Yeah, so, that's awesome. You know, Pandora was the last one that we wasn't on. But yeah, you guys can catch the replay on iHeart. You can catch it on Spotify. And now you can catch it on uh, Pandora. So if you didn't catch any of this conversation, make sure you go back and listen to the replay. Uh, I think it'll be available sometime tonight. Uh, so so let's talk about uh, before you get out of here. And listen, I just want to thank you for staying up for me. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, you are so very welcome. I took a little nap so that I could be bright eyed and bushy tailed. <laughs> now, was it a power nap or was it one of those, you know, I don't I don't know what day it is naps. No, it was like a power nap. It was just, you know, just a refreshing because I normally am like even my husband was like, I'm sorry, you're doing what? <laughs> you're normally winding down at this point. I was like, I know, but this is for Finch. I got to do it. I can't tell him no. <laughs> and so I, you know, I got myself together and got myself a little smoothie so I could keep my energy up and I'm excited. Now you've been married how long now? Three. We just celebrated our third anniversary. How much has life changed for you from being a single woman, being successful and doing your things to being married? It has it's changed some, but it hasn't been like day and night. I'm lucky to have an amazing husband who supports me, who edifies me, who wants to see me win and doesn't try to dim my light. Mm. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I empathize with women who don't have that. You know, my husband has never tried to slow me down or, or change things or have me show up in a way that doesn't allow me to be who I was created to be for the planet. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, really blessed that way. Um, and it's, it's been an amazing journey. Like, I mean, we still have a lot of, a lot to do, a lot of growing to do in terms of marriage and all of that good stuff, but we yep. are in it until we ain't hearing anymore. <laughs> right. And so somebody gotta be dead, right? <laughs> right. Somebody gotta be dead for this thing to be over. And, um, we're enjoying it. We're enjoying, enjoying each other, getting more and more comfortable every single day, but it, it's been a, an amazing ride so far. And I just, you know, really look forward to what's to come. Now, if people want to connect with you, how, how can they do so? Yeah. So part of the reason why I put my at Darnell Jervy Harmon there is because I'm at Darnell Jervy Harmon everywhere except for the brand new platform Clubhouse. I am on Clubhouse. I could not be Darnell Jervy Harmon on Clubhouse because my name is too long. It's too many characters. But everywhere <laughs> else, I don't know that there's another famous or well enough known Darnielle that you would have any problem finding me if you even just said at Darnielle. So that's how you can find me. That's the best way. I'm available, you know, everywhere where, you know, we have a presence on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. 
Um, and now Clubhouse, I have my own podcast, as Finch alluded to earlier, which we are also on Pandora and iHeartMedia and Spotify and Amazon Music. And we're on all of the places that you can be podcasting. So you can look us up there by just putting in my name. All right. Listen, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy that you was able to come by. I was like, man, when we do it, we can't do a show without talking to Danielle when it comes to entrepreneurship. Y'all got to be crazy. I so. appreciate it. This is so much fun. And uh, yeah, I, I love it. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm grateful for all that you're doing out in the world. And anytime I can support, I'm happy to, to stop by and support. Well, stop by and pick up some of this new merch, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll check it out. I love merch. We just opened up our own merch shop. So so yeah, I'm all the way down for that. So I'll check it out and see what you guys got, especially because you got specials going on right now. I think I heard oh, you yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah, we, we keep a special going on because y'all people out here are special. I, I look, I love a good special, so I will definitely check it out. All right, all right, guys. Daniel uh, Harmon. Now, now you 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 put all three of the names together, right? Yeah. So I didn't I didn't change I didn't hyphenate my name. I made Jervy my middle name so that from yeah. a brand perspective, because we you know I had been in business for ten years before we got married as Darnell right. Jervy, right. and so I didn't want to lose the brand connection, and so we just made Jervy my middle name and then added Harmon on the end. That's a smart idea, ladies. That's a smart idea, you know. <laughs> but we are not hyphenated because I don't believe in hyphenation. So yeah, I, I don't either. <laughs> you either take his name or you delete. Right, it. Absolutely. So, all right, Danielle, yeah, we'll we'll holler at you later. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, guys. yo, 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 you're in the mix. The world's finest man, DJ. Just like I have the radio on the telly.